uh, I didn't go to start with the uh, with the presentation for this uh, art star club. The, this is the second part that I shared with you in the past uh, in the past presentation. Okay. Um, uh, further all, good morning. Thank you to be here. And the presentation of today is to talk about the multi-multi-multi single cell RNA seq and single cell attack seq downstream analysis uh, with Seurat and Signac. Uh, and for this session, we are going to focus in the clustering determination and as the main topic. So uh, it's planning to cover a uh, talk about of the available approaches that we have with these two tools, and also to see the steps to perform uh, clustering in each one of the modalities, as well as the combination of the two. And also, uh, if the time allows, uh, we can see a bit of the clustering overview using the loop browser that is available as a R package in for uh, Frontenex genomics. Uh, so, uh, as a well of reminder of the past uh, of the past uh, session, I would like to to look around uh, where the data that we are going to use is coming from. So this data, uh, the data that I'm going to use in this implementation, is a multi ohm data set that has uh, attack and gene expression. These data uh, are from flash frozen human healthy uh, brain tissue and contains around 3,000 cells. Uh, the count matrices uh, were generated using the Cell Ranger R pipeline version 2.0.0. And well, uh, the tools, the main tools that we are going to use to produce this uh, exercise is uh, the, the cell ranger uh, pipeline that is the one where the data comes from, the, the count matrices. And we are going to use mainly the Seurat version 5 and the, and the Signac version 1.9, and also uh, human genome as reference. Okay, uh, well, uh, going back to the, to what is the purpose of these uh, tools integrated, well, we need to look out of the, how this, uh, mo these two modalities, this multi ohm approach is performed. So in the past session, we look around where are the, the raw data that we are processing. So uh, when you run the cell ranger R pipelines in, in raw data uh, uh, to generate the count matrices in the out directory, it's, uh, it's a generate uh, a couple of, of files that contains the information related with attack. The, these are the two main, the fragments, DSB, and the and the peak annotations. One is the the real fragments, and the other is the index. And also we have the filtered feature barcode matrices that contains information related with the cells. Uh, but also we have another important files that is the 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 how is his name? It is the per barcode metrics that contains the metadata. For example, it contains information about a motive. And, and, in, and in fact, it contains uh, metadata related with 30 different uh, metrics. Uh, and also we have uh, two uh, complementary files that contains the summary of the key metrics related with the, uh, with the processing. So uh, in the past session, we were looking at, um, let's say, important metrics that are used for the single cell RNA-seq and attack-seq uh, under this uh, workflow. So uh, what I want to point here is that today that we are, con we are going to contain it with the clustering, we need to have clear that uh, the SEGAT uh, object that is handled for the zero tool uh, it's like uh, making an extension to incorporate the chromatin assay into the into the object. So the first thing that we did was to create the Serrat object with the gene expression information and then extend and attach the chromatin information. And so now what we are going to do 
in this in this uh, in this meeting, we are going to to look at the dimensionality dimensionality reduction, the neighbors neighbors to look at the most uh, closest uh, neighbors, and we are going to go to the clustering for each one of the modalities. So, it's an like an integrated pipeline to to perform a multimodal analysis. So. Um, I showed you in the past uh, meeting that there is a, reposit there is a very uh, simple repository where I have the, the code, if you need it, that is the, the zero one gene expression attack per processing is the one that you can use to create a certain object with the chromatin accessibility information. And the one that I'm going to use today is the zero two clustering. If you want to look at the, the task that we are going to perform today. Um, also, there is uh, another directory that is called supplemental, supplemental material that contains information related with um, uh, the technical aspects of each one of the metrics. So you have doubts about uh, these uh, metrics that we are, we are using. Here, you can, you can look at each one of the properties that are described like metrics for each one of these uh, assets. I feature linked detect, link, uh, linked genes, linked peaks. So it's, um, here we have the definition, but here we also have thresholds, like the expected value for each one of these meetings and additional notes. Okay, now that we know what is the information that we are going to handle today, I'm going to go back to the main topic for this talk, that is the, the closing. So, um, as a way uh, to start uh, from the beginning, uh, what is clustering uh, for those that are not uh, familiar with this? Uh, in simple words, uh, clustering is a, a technique. Uh, sorry, I want to look at the annotation. Is this one? Okay. And then, what is, is this one? The point red, the red point, what is? The what? The, the red, red point. The red point. Oh, uh, it's not really yellow. Oh, is this one or the yellow? Oh, that's it's just here. The, that's just the color of the whatever <laughs> you draw. Ah, okay. So it's because you can see my pointer. I don't know where it's at. So I want to use the annotation in order to show you exactly where I'm saying. You can use the pen. The pen? Yeah. Oh, wait, this way? Draw, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just underline something, I guess, if you want to. Just to let people follow the. Okay. 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 Um, what's the matter? Okay. The clustering is a technique in machine learning that is used to group or to cluster similar data points uh, together based on certain features or properties. So that is why we have a different kind of distance measures to to group elements. So in this example, very simple example, you can see that we have uh, different fruits. This is uh, the population. And so um, using a specific algorithm, we can uh, like uh, decide how these uh, elements are going to be grouped. So in this case, the elements are separated, as you can say, uh, by, by uh, the the kind of element that is, the properties that these, these are apples, these are pears, and these are strawberries. But there are another approach, that, uh, for example, we can decide to uh, classify the objects you know, based in the size, or uh, not just in the, or just in the color. So in this case, we will have a big, a big group and a small group of pears because they are, two of these uh, groups are red, so one is green. So the selection of the algorithm in the clustering is a very important fact to, to, to perform this, uh, this task. Basically, in machine learning, uh, uh, a broad classification just uh, uh, divide this into groups, that is the hard clustering and the soft clustering, but we have also different kind of of, self, of, of algorithms to do this. And in fact, there is like a, taxonomies to do this. So it's, uh, sometimes it's very uh, difficult to try to understand what, what we are doing, what kind of algorithm we are picking up. 
So in this talk, I'm going to focus on explain what kind of algorithms we are using uh, for each one of the cluster in the in the gene expression aside, in the attack aside, and when we uh, merge the two or combine the two modalities. So this is just an example of another kind of classification. So we have a lot of these uh, options. Now, um, uh, specifically, when we want to choose algorithms, really when we are uh, using uh, these uh, packages, the packages have decided for us what kind of algorithms uh, is going to perform the, the task. And, and sometimes we have a couple of flavors that we can like interchange for one or, or another algorithm. So we need to have clear uh, this point. So if, if an algorithm is, is good or not, uh, well, uh, I think that in, in most of the paper, you are going to find that each algorithm has his own uh, strengths and weakness. And the selection usually relies upon the particular problem and the characteristic of the data. Uh, a very specific sample for this is that in using Seurat and Signac, the clustering for the gene expression for the for the RNA uh, is a uh, performance to the PCA for uh, is performing to the PCA, and this is uh, a k-means uh, algorithm that is making this task. And for the attack, assay is using a lantern semantic index that is a kind of spherical clustering. And when we want to merge or combine the two properties, um, is using a weighted status network for the integrated. So here we can combine the clustering of these two properties. So as you can see, uh, the tools uh, indeed, uh, have incorporated these algorithms and functions that we just look at some way like finding neighbors or finding clustering. But there are also a kind of property that we can like try to play with the, with the options that we have. Now, to continue, um, how is the clustering determination uh, done for the for multi analysis? Well, uh, we have to, to take in account that to perform, to before to make clustering, uh, when we uh, just have this uh, set of objects, uh, let's say with some kind of quality control applied, uh, also we need to perform another kind of preprocessing that is related with data transformation that includes the dimensionality reduction in both a size independently. So we first are going to process the clustering for gene expression and then for attack, and then we are going to combine. Uh, particularly when we are talking for the RNA-seq assay, uh, CELRAT has two different approaches. One is the standard CELRAT workflow that I'm going to keep details for there. And the other one is the SC transfer. That is the new one that is uh, included in the version five, that is the last one. Uh, that is released for so that. And in the case of the in the of the workflow, uh, the simplest way to think in this is to say, okay, I'm going to perform PCA for gene expression based in k-means. I'm going to perform uh, Latin semantic index for attack, uh, some kind of spherical clustering, and I'm going to combine these two through the weightless neighbors network for the integrator. So I'm going to go back to the code here, and we are going to load the data. So the first uh, task. Cynthia, can you make it full screen the code? Oh, it's because I have to change oh, to this okay. one. But I'm going to to load a bit more to explain some points and then go back. Okay. So uh, in the past session, we create uh, a couple of objects. So I'm going to go here to the to the code, and in process the data, let me make it. In process the data, um, in cell ranger attack processing, I have prepared previously these uh, set objects that contains the gene expression and the attack information. Is all that these objects contains. 
so I'm going to pull up these objects uh, in order to perform the closing. So the libraries that I need is the Seurat and the Signa uh, as the main tools that we are going to use here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to sign out. Okay, down here in the directory. Okay, so I'm going to load the, the two main uh, libraries or packages. And the next one is to just to be sure that the process set data directory exists to save some information and also the, the plots directory. So I'm going to run these two. Okay. Uh, I'm using this label to, to give a name to the sample that is uh, related with the, the, the case of study. So this is uh, the flash of frozen brain healthy. And then um, here, I'm going to look at the directory, where is the object? So if you look to the object, you can see that is uh, here. So, we are going to pull this object in order to continue with the process. So with this, uh, with this command, I'm just going to read the object. So here, uh, now what, I, what we have is the is a certain object with chromatin information attached. So let's do wait seconds. Look at it. Okay. So you read here. Mm, you can see that we have a serial object that contains features for uh, 3,283 uh, 3, uh, cells, and then we have two, assi two assays. One assay is the attack, and the other is the RNA. So now we are going to continue a bit more and just start with the clustering for the RNA. Remember that we need to make the clustering uh, independently for each assay. So in this line, I'm saying that I want to work with the RNA um, assay. You need to specify with what assay you want to work. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pull up this because the active assay now is the attack. So you need to declare what of these you want to use. Cynthia, the font is very small. It's okay that way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, let's go to continue. Now we have here in this point the assay loaded, and we know that this, that this object has RNA and also has uh, attack information attached. So, let's to continue. I said that uh, we have available two clustering options for the gene expression. So this is the standard serial workflow, and we have also the SSC transfer version. So how this how this works? When you are looking, when you are working or implementing the standard serial workflow, uh, you need to um, let's say to perform uh, some kind of heuristic. Uh, some kind of steps that is the elliptic way what CERACs do, that is first normalize the, the data, then it's looking for, for fine variable features to the object uh, to take into account, and then scale the data to a logarithmic um, a value. And then uh, you can continue the workflow uh, in the same way for both of these approaches. Uh, so in the case of the, SC transfer version, uh, we don't have the steps of normalization and the scale data because these are like in some way embedded by the by this function. So then you can you can continue the the same steps like in the standard approach. Uh, uh, also, you need to to have uh, I'm going to provide two highlights here because the SSC transfer version is only available in CERAT five. And well, uh, this is defined by the developers as a framework for the normalization and the variance stabilization that is included in, normal, in normalized data and in scale data. Also, why they say you can like omit this uh, need to apply this, 
these steps if you just run this one. But there are also another uh, motivation uh, that is the, the global scaling in these uh, in these two in the standard approach relies on the assumption that each cell originally contains the same number of RNA molecules. So that is why the several developers propose an alternative approach that is considering that not uh, all the time the cells contain the same number of RNA molecules. So it's trying like to offer this alternative. Also, we can look at that in the case of the SSC transfer version, um, they are also incorporated uh, in the function uh, parameters to remove confounding sources of variation, uh, for example, mitochondrial level or, or whatever other uh, metadata that you have in the object. And also uh, in the server version file, like there, where there was uh, a very, uh, let's say that it's not easy to look at what is the function really doing. So a lot of people prefer to continue working with the standard workflow because in some way you have more control what you are doing here. You can like uh, decide some kind of different uh, approaches to normalize the data and also to escape the data. They are incorporated here, but you cannot see it uh, in a transparent way. So uh, looking at that, they uh, realize another version that is the SCT uh, version two. That is the one applied by default if you don't specify what kind of uh, workflow you want to, to follow. And just to conclude with this point, uh, uh, this, this, this algorithm, it uses a regularized neg negative binomial regression that removes these uh, unwanted effects for the units every tour here some residuals that is the metric what it's uh, using. Uh, I, this is a very wide topic, so I have here a couple of, of manuscripts that the developers uh, have available because uh, there is a lot of people asking for uh, what of these two approaches is the best one to perform. Well, really, what I can say by my own experience is that it's not enough clear. So when this is not enough clear, most of the users uh, are looking at the standard workflow. That is the one that we are going to use here. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to normalize the data, as you can see here, following the standard um, approach. So I'm going uh, after to, to, to make the normalization, I'm going to scale the data to a log normalizer. And then uh, it's very quickly because we have just uh, 3,000 cells. Uh, if we look at the at the information, we can see here that we have the, the data now normalized. The normalized data are, is a scale factor. And then what we can do is to look at uh, fine variable features. Uh, these fine variable features has different methods that is just uh, a kind of variance of the default method. And the end features is defined the number of, of, of properties that we are going to take into account. These are the default methods that I want to show you just in order to provide a bit more of, of information. So if we uh, run this line, uh, we are going to first calculate the, the gene variance and then it's going to, to calculate the feature variance of the standardized and clip the values. That is, all, all these options are, exist as parameters to, let's say, a way of debug the, the function. Now um, I'm going to, to have a head of the, of the variable features and I'm going to just uh, cache the first 10 elements in order to, to, to look at them and see uh, how this looks. So now here we have the, the 10, uh, we have labeled the 10 most variable features according with the parameters that we have uh, run. Uh, the next step, let's say, is that uh, we could, um, we could uh, scale the data. We need to scale the data under this uh, approach. So we are going to use all the genes, but you can also uh, look at specific subset of genes uh, to, do this, uh, to, do, to do this task. 
And also exists um, a parameter that is called the variables to regress. The this the it's let's say it's analogous to the one that the that is uh, applied in the SSC transform. Uh, that is used to to give a parameter. For example, I can give here the mitochondrial rate or the mitochondrial percentage at the variable to regress the values. But like this takes a lot of time. I'm just I'm just going to do it like, with null values. I'm going to go back here in order to show a few details. Up here. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, the next step here is to, to, uh, to perform the linear dimensionality reduction with the PCA. So here I'm going to provide in the, the several object. And if you wish, you can provide this subset of variable features, but if you don't want, you can just run uh, the PCA with the object. And it's going to, to pull up uh, by default all the variable features that you have in the object. Uh, as output, uh, the output is a list of genes with the most positive and negative loadings that represented of genes that exhibit either correlation or anti-correlation across the single cell in the data sets. So performing this, we can say that uh, it's, it's running the, the algorithm so we can look at the separate object in order that you, here are the, the PCs, and these are the positive and the negative correlations. But you can also look at the object and, and see the structure here. And you now can see that we have uh, one, one new, um, one new uh, assay here that is uh, for the dimensionality reduction for the RNA data, that is the PCA. Uh, now uh, you can look at the data if you wish uh, in this dim heat map. Uh, where I'm just uh, pulling, uh, uh, three, 300 cells and in balanced way. Let's look at this. Let's see here. So it's just to, to look at the, the data if you wish, but you have in indeed a lot of ways, three or four ways to look at these uh, values. Uh, this is one of the most used. And also, if you want to look what is the inflection point uh, based in the PCA, uh, SEVRAT has incorporated a function that is called EvoFlow. And this EvoFlow is a very basic way to look at the, the PCAs. So it's a way like to figure out, because it's not very efficient, but you can look at it in the, let's say that in the PCA 20, you have the inflection point for this. Uh, for calculate the next steps. Uh, but well, this is available in the same packages. And now we are going to do what is the main topic for today, that is the, the clustering. So as you can see, there is a lot of, of steps processing and preparing the data to do this. So for the, for the clustering and the RNA assay, uh, basically, it constructs a, a, a K negative network graph based on the Euclidean distances on the PCA space. So we require we require the PCA that is here, the reduction that we are going to use. And also, uh, this uh, use the, the KNF graph to construct uh, a shared negative network graph by calculating the nervous overlap that is through the Jacquard index between swells that are in the K parameters, the K parameters that are defined like the neighbors uh, to, to, to get this index. And by default, uh, this function is taken as input the first 10 PCS. So uh, coming back here, you can see that I have the fine neighbors function, I have the object here, and I left the defaults values as it is, and let's go to run this. Okay, so it calculates the, the negative neighbor graph, and then over this, uh, over this uh, matrix, it calculates the Cheres negative network, and so we have performed the, this task. So the last step for the RNA assay is to find clusters. So to find clusters, 
uh, here's more details to take into account. Uh, this function in, in Seurat, what does is to identify clusters of cells by the shared network network, modularity optimization that we calculate previously, but is optimized by this function. So what the function does is first calculate the, the, K, the KNN and then, constru and then constructs again the SNN graph and then optimize the function, but we have a couple things to look at. That is the resolution, the method, and the algorithm that we have available here. So the resolution uh, is talking about uh, how large or small we want the clusters or the communities. So uh, by default, uh, the resolution in the function is 0 0.8 that is expecting to have general uh, a, a general overview of the communities. But if you're expecting to have a smaller cluster, you need to, to increase this value, say, uh, by one or by two, so you are going to get smaller clusters. If you want to have more uh, general clusters or more bigger clusters, we need to diminish uh, this uh, resolution. And well, the input that he received is the previously uh, object that we have a processor. And, but we can also define uh, the algorithm. The algorithm is a very important part because uh, here we have, uh, let's say, uh, four options. But the most used is the Loven algorithm and the Leiden algorithm that requires uh, the Python interface to, to run. But basically, these are uh, some kind similar, but uh, for example, Loven performs a, a, the KNN graph with edge down between cells with similar gene expression patterns, but uh, Loven is still visiting each node in the network until there is no more uh, node movement to, to perform the communities. Why? In the case of the latent algorithm, it uses a, a fast local move procedure in this phase that it means that once that it has located uh, the position of the of the neighbor, it's not going to be seen again the the, the, the that node. So it's a, a very fast way to do it. So I have seen that most of the users with those is that if they have a very large uh, data set, they tend to use the later because it's faster because it's not visiting the nodes uh, each one that the iteration is done. While uh, when you have, let's say, a data set that you have enough memory and all that stuff, you can perform the default diesel vein. So I'm going to, to go back here and I'm going to run uh, the the algorithm that we have, the number one is the Lobin algorithm that is default. Uh, we have uh, the standard resolution and the cluster name that I'm using for say this uh, for this for say this metadata is the C Lobin. So we have now completed task. We can see here that uh, it is going to return another server object, but now we have items. The items are the labels that are used to, to classify the, the cells. So now if you look at the items with this command into the server object, we can look at the cluster that we have. So we can look at that we have a, a number of communities of clusters that is equal to 14. And this is the, the, uh, this is the table that contains the, the number of the clusters from zero to 30, and this is the number of cells that are uh, that are in each one of these clusters. So um, <clears throat> now, if we look at the, if we look at the columns and the metadata of the, of the server object, we can look at, then I have a new metadata that is the server clusters, that everyone that you run uh, the, find clusters is going to be overwritten. So you need to be careful with this you know, when you are going to decide what resolution are you going to work out. And also I'm saving the data in the cell vein as the, in the cell vein uh, column data as a metadata to keep the information because perhaps you want to run this with different resolutions. Uh, so the next step is to just uh, run the UMAP in order to visualize the clusters. So this is the standard uh, 
a standard command with a uh, command line when I'm specifying the object that contains the reduction. The name of the reduction now is uh, PCA, and this is the reduction name that I'm pulling up. So how can I see this information? You in the in the Seurat object, you can look at the reductions. And so we can have the name of the information that you have now. We have the PCA, that is the, the, the reduction for the NAL site, and we have also saved the UMAP to look at uh, in two dimensions the data. So uh, now that you have the data, um, we can uh, just look at the data bit in order to see. It. Uh, okay, it's, sorry, I jumped some steps. Is here. Okay, so now we can see the the RNA the clustering for the RNA assay. So we have thirteen. 13 clusters, and you can see here the label uh, that is um, derived from the name that we use here. And well, here is another example to run uh, another resolution. So in order to get, let's say, uh, I increase in the resolution to two because I want smaller clusters. And now I have calculated 23 communities. So I run the UMAP to look at the communities in, in a, in the human production, okay, it's processing the data. If you look at the reductions, we can look at if we have the loving two because I pick up the resolution two. This is the name that I did, and then I can just look at this uh, new clustering with uh, more details about the, of this of the this uh, assay. Okay, so this is all for the gene expression data. Now. Oh, the other two steps are very fast, really, because I derived from the same. So the only difference is that now I'm going to pick up, uh, I'm going to change the active assay for the attack. So I use the default assay uh, command with the object, and I'm going to change for, for attack. So if you look at the data, you can see that now my active assay is attack. So uh, I'm going to work with this one. Uh, in the case of, of this particular kind of data, uh, you can see that it's very important that, uh, uh, to, re to realize that the attack assay is uh, a bit more noisy. So uh, after the deconstructing the initial feature count metrics, there is a couple of several transformations that needs to be applied to compensate this sparsity. So one of these methods is the binarization. That is the most frequently used transformation that is used to, to alleviate the potential problems that are, are related with the sequencing depth and the PCR amplification artifacts, uh, particularly for this kind of data sets. And well, now that it's a growing uh, quantity of tools that are uh, in, incorporating this kind of, of approach, uh, many tools are adopting the Latin semantic, semantic index. That is the one that I talked at the beginning. And for example, now this is implemented for the developer of Signac in ARC R, for example, just to give two cases. So, but what is this? The LSA, the LSI is a, is a natural language processing language uh, algorithm that originally was designed to evaluate or assess document similarities based on word counts. So how this how is this translated to the attack? Well, in the in this case, the cells are handled as documents, whereas the peak regions are handled as words. So uh, looking at this analogous uh, approach is what is uh, the metrics uh, transformed in order to look at the neighbors and then to perform the clustering. So saying that, uh, the, the, the steps to do this is, um, is to, to run the run TF ID, IDF command followed by the, you want to look at the find top features. Uh, you can do it, uh, but you can then run the SPD. But what is this? Uh, in the case of Signac, that is a tool that has these commands, uh, it's a combination of a step. The combination of a step between this, between this uh, transformation and, and this one is what is called 
the Latin Semantic Index. And, and the TF IDF, IDF is uh, a normalization that is looking to make the, the, the it's, it's implementing the conversion to the binarization approach. And then the singular value decomposition use the RBA that is uh, looking for, for the AM vectors that correspond to, to the sparse metrics. So basically what we need to do here is just to take the first one in order to normalize the attack count metrics. And then uh, these, these, uh, these uh, normal data are scaled by a factor of 1,000. And after this, we can look at the, at the top variables where you can use uh, a threshold. This threshold to look at these, uh, let's say the main, the most variable features can be determined uh, by a quantile or can also be determined by the number of cells. For example, if you use uh, the, the Q5, like an argument, uh, it includes the 95 percentage most common features as the variable features that usually you are going to find all what you need here. But you can also uh, declare this like a, like a numeric, value, uh, numeric value, like 10, for example. And so you are saying to the algorithm that include only features with more than 10 total counts in the set of variable features. So depending on what you are looking for, you can decide how to parameterize your function. So I run this one, and then uh, I'm going to finish the, the LSI uh, normalization running this uh, singular vector decomposition. Uh, so it's running now. It takes a bit more time. And so in the middle of this, I'm going to, uh, to explain the next line. Uh, in this line, uh, we uh, after that we have completed the, the dimensionality reduction for the attack uh, side, uh, I'm going to run QMAP also to look at the values, and I'm going to use the, the I'm going to jump the first dimension because this is usually related with the sequencing there. So, but you can play here and look at uh, the, the most adequate values to do this. This is the name that I'm going to use for my reduction name. And this is the key, uh, the, the reduction key is the, it's a metadata column that is going to be attached to the, to the object. So uh, once the, this finishes, uh, the next steps are very similar to the ones that we run with the gene expression. We are just going to look at, uh, to find, find multi-modal neighbors. But uh, in here, we are combining the two reductions that we have. We have the PCA for the gene expression, but we have the LSAE, the, the LSI for, um, for the attack. And I'm going to specify the number of dimensions that I want to use, one to 50 for the gene expression and two to 50 for the LSA, because as I said, we usually jump the, the first dimension. I'm going to run the next one command to have the information. It creates the index. And here, now we are going to integrate the objects. This is the last step, and then we can look at the data. So this, uh, we are going to, uh, let, let's to look at the reductions in order that you see the, the objects. So you can see here that, um, that we have the PCA that is required to perform the reductions for the gene expression and also for the, for the attack object. So we have two reductions here for the gene expression that is the Louvain the, at, at 0.8, that is the standard um, resolution. But the last one that we run is the reduction with the clustering resolution at two where we have more communities. And we have also here the attack reduction that, that is the RSA that's related with the with this assay. So that is why I pick up these names. So I am saying that I want to look at this list and I'm saying you can look at the number of reductions that you need to, that you want to perform. 
So he's calculating all the all the neighbors for these two modalities. Uh, uh, I, I want, one thing that I want to mention here is that to make this combination is uh, running a weighted negative network graph that identify the negative network based on weights on a weighted combination of the of the uh, of the two of the two reductions that we perform independently. So looking back here, we have the steps completed and we can run the UMAP in order to look at the to look at the data in in a in a in a UMAP space. Uh, after to make the combination, we can look uh, for clusters in the graph in, and we are going to save this in the in with the graph name. Uh, where is, um, sorry, yeah, with, with this name, and we are going to we have also available uh, like different algorithms for some kind of flavors derived from the same one. So I'm going to run this one, and we can look at the object and look at the data in order to visualize what we are doing. So, oh, sorry, it's because I forgot to pull it at the top. So here, I'm going to build a plot just to look at the three objects, to the to the three reductions and the clustering. So one is the UMAP Lubain for the gene expression. The other one is the UMAP attack for the attack assay and the combination of the two approaches. So let's go back here. Let me make it. I'm going to run this one. Okay, ready. So now we can look at um, the information that we have on the now, that is the clustering for NA, the clustering for attack, and the way of negative network, that is a combination of these two approaches. Um, all the information is saved in the corresponding slot for each one of the assays. But as a uh, last point, so you know, you can look at here what is the result of this clustering of this combination. So now we have uh, for 15 clusters with different kind of of cells assigned. Uh, so uh, of last step, I just want to add that you can also make some kind of subclustering. For example, I have this community that is the cluster zero that has, it's the biggest of this. So I can use this, run this function, the define subcluster. I provide the object with the clustering information and then I specify what cluster I want to, let's say to make a small subpopulation. So this one, particular for this one. So I use the graph that is the combination of the two approaches. And I declare uh, this uh, metadata as, as a cluster, and I use a resolution of 0 0.5, and I run this with the before algorithm. So here, now we have, if I look to the items, that is where it's information related with the, with the, um, the, with the clusters, with the community that we have performed. If we look first at the metadata, where are our several clusters, you can look at the 15 clusters that we have in the combination of the two assays. But if I say the subcluster, so I can see here that the my cluster zero has been divided into communities because I subcluster just the cluster zero. So in this way, you can make small communities just declaring uh, what cluster you want to partition that belongs to the same object. So uh, just to look uh, a few of these, you can rename these uh, subclusters. Let's say that these are my cluster of interest. I pick up the cluster zero, 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 that is the label, and I give a, an arbitrary name, and the zero one, and I give another arbitrary name, and I'm going to rename it in order to see it in, in a UMAP. So let's look at the object now. The label is pretty small, but uh, let me see if we can look at what this, for example, in the RNA side, here is the cluster zero, and it's divided in, in these two labels. Here is also in the attack, is uh, 
is identified, but it's also identified in the wireless network network. So we have here divided the closest zero into communities. So this is basically all the the things that we have available uh, using these two these tools, uh, the Serac and the Signac combination. So uh, that's all we have for now. We we don't have enough time to look at the Lupe browser, but I can address the information in the channel. So you have some questions. We have uh, five minutes. Or you can use the channel if you have questions I can answer in, in the channel if you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, uh, thank you guys. If you have any questions or any time.